Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today and in today's video we're going to be looking at how to approach CBL at medical school. So just a little bit about the medicine guide. So the medicine guide is a YouTube channel which has free online videos to help support medical students throughout their entire journey at medical school. So I've got videos on how to be successful during the pre-clinical years and the, cl and the clinical years. I've got videos focusing on the high yield topics that crop up in final exams for paediatrics. I've got videos focusing on the high yield obs and gynae topics for finals. I've got high yield cardiology topics for finals. I've also got high yield imaging quiz for finals. So initially I'm going to discuss which medical schools in the UK offer a CBL course. I'm going to work through an example case of CBL and the CBL approach to this case. And then I'll be looking at top tips that you can use to help you hit the ground running when you begin your CBL course. So this is taken from the BMA's website and it was updated in 2020. So as it stands currently in 2020, there are three medical schools that use CBL teaching as part of the medical course. And those medical schools are Liverpool, Cardiff, and Glasgow throughout phase three from September to February of the third year. Okay. So CBL learning involves small group teaching. So from my own experience, there tends to be six to eight students in each CBL group. Now, in the CBL group, there will also be a CBL tutor. So this CBL tutor, if you're undergoing CBL learning in your preclinical years, your CBL tutor most likely will be one of the lecturers on your course. But if you're undertaking CBL learning in your clinical years, then it's likely that the CBL tutor will be one of the doctors whose clinics you might attend during your rotation, or he might act as one of the clinical tutors for your ward placements during your particular rotation. So CBL learning is case-based learning. So you will open up a case during Monday morning, for instance, and the whole point of opening up this case is that it's supposed to trigger discussions for you as a group to discuss the possible differentials for that particular case. Now, your CBL tutor is there to facilitate the discussion. So he or she will be acting almost as a dead falls advocate. So they will be trying to challenge the discussion that the group is having, trying to make you think of alternative possible differentials for a particular condition. And the CBL tutor may decide to offer a little bit of teaching to help reinforce your learning or to help introduce a topic. But primarily in CBL learning, it's essentially the group's responsibility to discuss the case thoroughly and outline possible differentials because that will really act as your groundwork for the research and your note taking for the remainder of the week. Now, it depends on the CBL tutor really, but your CBL tutor might ask for members of the group to act as a scribe and to potentially other members of the group to act as a chair. And in those situations, a chair would be a member of the group who is nominated themselves to help really guide the direction of the group's discussion. And a scribe in this situation would be um, a member of the team who's nominated themselves to write on the whiteboard the key discussions and the key topics that the group has spoken about and also they might condense the key aspects of the case and the whole point of CBL learning 
is just to really introduce the case that you've read together as a group and to consider some of the differentials because this will act as your benchmark for all of the reading and note taking that you'll be doing over the next few days. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to CBL learning. So in a little bit more detail now. So on Monday morning, like I said, you'll open the CBL case with your CBL tutor and your CBL group. Key elements of the case and the theme of that particular week will be discussed. And key differentials will also be discussed and you will later on go away and research this. For instance, if you open up an endocrine related case, it's likely that that particular week of study for you will be to research and become familiar with all the possible endocrine conditions that are very common across the population. Now, over the course of the next few days, so from Monday to Friday, you will be attending seminars. You might have some anatomy sessions, depending on your medical school. You will have clinical skill sessions. Again, this would be more relevant to the rotation that you're on. So, for instance, if you are currently on your surgical placement, you might have clinical skill sessions focusing on suturing or catheterization. Whereas if you're on rotations such as pediatrics, you might have a pediatric BLS session. So the clinical skill session will vary on the particular rotation that you're currently on. And also throughout the week, you'll be attending ward placements, clinic placements, and potentially theater attachments or theater placements. Again, that varies upon whether or not you're currently on a surgical rotation. So this gives you a good idea of what you'll be doing from Monday to Friday. And then over the weekend, so the Saturday and Sunday, you'll still be researching on your notes, researching on the differentials. And on Monday morning, that's when you'll meet up with your group again to close the CBL case, to review some of the differentials that you've been researching over the past week reviewing the key elements of the case. And also on the same day, you'll open the next CBR case and you'll be identifying the differentials that you will research over the next week. Okay, and then the circuit continues. So hopefully that's given you a good idea of what CBR learning is like. And this is particularly CBR learning in the clinical years. Now, I'm going to give you some top tips on how to approach a CBL course. So my top tip before you even attend the CBL session is that if you have access to the CBL case beforehand, then please make sure that you've read the case and you're familiar with the case, because it means that when you enter CBL, you'll, you'll be able to be a more active participant. You'll be able to engage in the CBL discussion more actively. And also it's an opportunity for you to potentially teach others about certain things that they're unsure of. And that not only will help to reinforce your own learning, it will make you come across as a team player. And it's important that you do engage in CBL sessions, particularly because your CBL tutor at the end of your rotation will have to give feedback on each member of the team. So if you come across a little bit more engaged in the CBL discussion and more helpful, then it's more likely that you'll receive positive feedback. And that's something that we all strive to do. I would also say review your timetable for the forthcoming week. So if you don't have access to your CBL case, but if you have a look at your timetable and you can see that you've got a lot of, let's say, um, cardiology rotations or cardiology seminars or cardiology clinic placements, then it's likely that you're going to have some cardiology case for the next few days. So it might be a good idea to brush up on basic cardiology. And that leads very nicely on to the last point, just to review some basic anatomy and physiology before your CBL session, because it's expected that you've 
read up or you're at least familiar with basic anatomy and physiology prior to opening up the CBL case because it not only will help to reinforce your learning, the fact that you're reading a clinical case scenario, it will also help to develop the discussion that you'll have with your group. Okay. So here are some tips for approaching the CBL session itself. So when you've got access to the CBL case, make sure that you highlight any key phrases that you're unsure of. And please make sure to ask people in the CBL session of anything that you're unsure of. And I know I've mentioned this before, but it's also really important that you clarify anything that other people are unsure of too because like I said, it gives you the opportunity to teach others, helps to reinforce your own learning, and it makes you come across as a more positive, engaging, active member of the team. And also it's important that you discuss as a group what you think are the key differentials for the CBL case, because that will put you in good stead for the remainder of the week, because the ultimate responsibility for making sure that you're up to date with all of your notes and that you've completed your CBL learning to the highest ability is ultimately your responsibility so if you're unsure of what exactly you need to do then you need to discuss that with your team and make sure that everybody is aware of the differentials that they need to go away and read upon okay so i've got an example of a cbl case and i'll give you a few seconds to read the case I'll give you about 10 seconds. Um, you can either pause the video at this point and read it in your own time, or you can wait 10 seconds, it's up to you. And then I'll give you an example of how, as a clinical medical student, I would have approached this case. So I'll give you 10 seconds starting from now then. Okay, so let's talk through the case. So hopefully you've had enough time to read the case and what you can see quite early on is that this sounds like a respiratory case. So we've got the fact that the patient is coughing at night, she feels very wheezy and she feels short of breath. So that should ring the alarm bells in your mind and make you think that we're definitely thinking of shortness of breath, potentially a cardiorespiratory case. So. With the breathing problems, the coughing at night, feeling wheezy and feeling short of breath. So this is really acting as a trigger point for you to consider the differentials of a patient presenting with acute shortness of breath and chronic shortness of breath. So for all the differentials that you come together as a group and discuss, it's important that for each and every single disease that you read upon over the next few days, that you consider the risk factors for each disease, the underlying pathology just briefly if you're in the clinical years, discuss the signs and symptoms and try to understand how that links to the pathology, and finally investigate the tests and investigations and then follow that up by management. Okay. Now, after closing your CBL case, so this would be on the following Monday, it's important that you reflect on the topics that your group members have discussed. So if they've spoken about a particular disease that you didn't know that you needed to cover, it's important that you write down the name of the disease and some of the points that they mentioned, because over the next few days, you can go away and research it and add it to your notes. Also, I think it's important that you cross-reference the discussion that you had in your CBL group with some of your other friends and talk about what sort of discussions did they have in their group and see if anyone's missed any diseases out because it's important that you keep up to date with your notes and also I would say over the forthcoming week it's important that you consolidate your learning so I would say that especially in the clinical years it's important that you try to learn as you go along and make sure that you're reviewing your notes, you're updating your notes as often as you can. And also I would strongly recommend that you practice questions online using question banks or using, um, sometimes you get little uh, SBA books and EMQ books as well. 
So that's really important to help consolidate your learning and also help you to apply your knowledge in a clinical fashion because that's helping you to become more prepared for your summer exams and your January exams. So hopefully you found my video helpful. Uh, please could I ask you to like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share my videos with your friends. Thank you very much for listening today and I wish you all the best with your exams.